Welcome to Let's Therapy, where we get real and raw about your mental health, faith, and blended family. We're your hosts, counselors, Scott and Vanessa Martindale. Now let's therapy. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Therapy. We're your host, Scott and Vanessa Martindale, and we are super pumped to be with you today. Yes. We are in season two and episode two yeah. of our series, and we're going to be talking about really kids and their experience through traumatic separation or divorce and how it affects them on their mental health level. Yes. And so being a blended family, you know, I've, I came from generational divorce and then experienced divorce myself. Um, and now we're a blended family. You know, this is something I know very well. Um, my son knows very well. And, um, you know, we deal with a lot of blended families. We counsel a lot of blended families um, in our counseling center and deal with a lot of teens, especially who have uh, who are either in that heat season or, you know, coming out of it with their parents separation or divorce and um, dealing with that trauma and helping them process through that. Well, it's a traumatic event. Yeah. And. You know, I mean, you list, you know, there's lists out there, like what's the most traumatic thing a human can go through. And, and divorce is high on the list. And for kids, especially, you know, they're in a situation where they have no control of this. Yeah. Um, they love both parents. Mm-hmm. And then they see something they love absolutely immensely, torn apart, and then wrecked havoc on each other. And then live with the concept that the person that I love, they don't love the person that I love, else, who else I love. So one yeah. parent doesn't like the other parent, but I love both parents. It's tremendously taxing on children. It's a, tremendously taxing to have to go from one house to another. Sure. We know these things. That's why the sting of divorce and separation and child custody is such a big proponent in our culture. Well, and this is, you know, one, there are so many different modalities of therapy. So, uh, you know, I've been in my master's in marriage and family therapy mm-hmm. program uh, for a few years now, and I've got about a year left. And so we learn different techniques, whether it's solution focused therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and cognitive behavioral therapy, Scott, this is. Yes. A modality that you use, and it's yeah. really focusing on the behaviors yeah. and how we cope and um, kind of re- rewiring those mm-hmm. behaviors. And so I know that this is um, a great form of therapy, especially for kids who have experienced that trauma and have gone through a divorce, parents who have divorced. Yeah. I mean, in reality, if you look at the symptoms of what we're looking at is when you look at trust issues, when you look at high anxiety, which we talked about last week, when you look at depression, when you look at adjustment disorders, I mean, these are all things that kids are dealing with as a result of a traumatic divorce or separation. Yeah. So really as a behavior therapist, and you've heard that you know, maybe a couple of times, really what it is is a cognitive behavioral therapist, yeah. which is you're trying to rework the wirings of, of, of a behavior and you're tracing it back and then tracing it forward to a result. So as a behavior therapist, I look at kids or, you know, sometimes young adults and I say, okay, what is the traumatic event? And then what are the preceding behaviors that are yeah. you're, you're, you're manifesting today? And what we do is go backwards and say, okay, you know, can we alter this behavior and therefore alter the result? Yeah. And then we try to look at any unhealthy results and every one of those we trace back to a behavior. Yeah. So it's really teaching the, these, these kids or individuals how behaviorally mm-hmm. to act Therefore, you will get a different result. Result. Yeah, no, that's good. And I know that we have experienced this with with our oldest, Uh, you know, certain unhealthy behaviors that were being um, uh, brought out or that he was doing when he was younger and, you know, getting him into counseling as a family, getting into counseling and being able to process that and then ultimately change the course of some things. And we've seen how that has helped him tremendously and us as we've gone through that. You know, I think one of the things to first uh, tell your children, if you're, you know, if you're beginning the therapy process for your children who have, you know, 
who've experienced the trauma of your separation and divorce, I think the first thing as a parent that we can just let explain to them and let them know is we need to tell them that it's not their fault, yeah. that this was not caused by anything that they done. A lot of kids that we treat um, with, uh, you know, traumas from their parents' divorce, a lot of them think it's their fault. They were like, oh, it's because I wasn't listening or I was a bad kid and that caused my mom to be stressed that then caused her and my dad to get in a fight. And ultimately explaining to them that, hey, mom and dad made this decision and this had nothing to do with you because a lot of kids carry that shame and that burden. And we see that a lot in counseling. So I think when we can start at home and, you know, have those open, honest conversations and just let them know like, hey, this is not your fault. Um, This was not caused by anything that you did. Yeah. Yeah. I think the next thing if you have the ability and you can have a coherent conversation with your 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 ex spouse is coming together as a couple and then explaining to your children or to your child like hey you were still immensely loved yes uh, you know this wasn't your fault uh, we're going to do our best to make you know it great for you and going forward we're going to do the things that that we really try to make this easier on you and again this is the um, Let's just call it what it is. I mean, so many times in this traumatic experience, the 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 opposite result is this. Yeah. And this is what happens: is is you have these children in the middle, and and parents use them as weapons. Yes. They use them as weapons. Yeah. Like I need to I need to hurt them. I need to hurt my ex spouse more, so I'll do it through the kids. Yeah. And and they do that almost indirectly. We've talked a lot about you know different parent alienation and, and isolation and things that they're doing. Mm-hmm. So the opposite of that is come together and say, we may not get along. We may not, you know, we may not even like each other, but what we do agree on is we both love our kids and let's do the things that are better for them. No, I think that's good. And so I think a few tips that I'm hearing here is, you know, always, you said this just a second ago, you said always reassure the children that they are loved. So reassuring that you love them regardless of this, you know, unfortunate situation that has happened and always trying to be neutral and positive if you can, because I know that can be difficult when you're co-parenting with a difficult ex-spouse about the children's relationship with the other parent. So staying neutral, not talking bad about the other parent or using the child as a pawn, so to speak. And as you were just saying, Scott, um, you know, I think always thinking about putting yourself in their shoes and what they're experiencing and what they're thinking. You know, I remember when we went through a really tough season with Michael and with the litigation, there were moments where I was like, man, I wonder what he's experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it's like to go back and forth and hear one house, you know, saying or doing this and the other house saying or doing that and how much that may put him in the middle and how much stress that caused him. So I think as parents, you know, put yourself in your children's shoes and what would you, what would be comforting to you? What would be encouraging to you? You know, what, what does that look like? Um, and what would you want the other last thing I would say is what would you want them to know and how would you want to be told, you know, depending on their age, you know, if they're younger, we probably need to be a little bit more sensitive as they're older, we can be more honest. And I think our children appreciate that. I know our 17 year old is like, don't beat around the bush, give it to me straight. You know, he doesn't want the fluff. And so I think that those are some small tips that we can implement whenever, you know, we're dealing with kids, um, who've been through that separation and divorce. And, and this is all the stuff that we can do in preparation to therapy. Cognitive behavioral th- therapy is a great um, avenue. So if you're looking for a therapist to help your children who have gone through a traumatic separation and divorce, ask uh, you know, what they specialize in. Is it you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, solution-focused therapy? Maybe it's um, they're a biblical counselor. Uh, get those... Uh, uh, credentials and, and, you know, find out what it is that your therapist is specialized in. Yeah. No, I I think everything that you said, Vanessa is right on point. Uh, the only thing I would add to that is, you know, kids are smarter than you think Mm -hmm. and they know when they're not getting the whole truth. Yeah. And they also become an age where that's the part that they need to heal. Yes. So, Again, as your child gets older, don't be scared just to tell them the truth. Yeah. Don't be scared to ask for their forgiveness. Yep. Because that's the part of the healing process those children need after they go through something that traumatic. Forgiveness is huge on on all all accounts. And whenever you can do that as a family together, you know, I remember 
um, praying for my ex-spouse and their family when we were going through that litigation season in front of our son at the dinner table. And it really did something. It did a transformation in our hearts. And I believe that it did one in our sons as well. And so forgiveness is key and prayer and, um, you know, and going through it together as a family, because it can feel so isolating and alone Mm -hmm. when you're experiencing uh, those things. So you know, keeping the lines of communication open. Well, at the end of the day, guys, nobody wants to go through a divorce. Nobody wants to go through anything traumatic in their life. You know, yeah. I mean, we talk about this as divorce, but when you look at traumatic events, you know, car wreck or anything that has to do with that, I mean, nobody really wants to be in that. But post traumatic event, there is a rehabilitation process. Mm-hmm. There is. Uh, you know, we're using guidance to help us get better. Yeah. But so many times in, in the communities that we serve, we look at it in isolation. Mm-hmm. Nobody goes to get counseling. Nobody gets to help. And everybody kind of suffers in silence, yeah. hoping that one day the light will turn on and everybody will be magically, you know, better. Yeah. And that just doesn't happen. No. And, and again, you guys, we're our, the best advocate we can have for our kids. God entrusted our children to us. And mm-hmm. so getting therapy for your kids who have gone through that divorce and, sep- you know, gone through your divorce and separation, um, it's important and, and it can be very vital to their mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health. And you may be the only parent who sees it too. I want to point that out. You may be in that situation where you're in a very contested co-parenting relationship and your other spouse is like, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with them. And you're thinking, no, there's, they're, they need help. So don't let that prevent you from going and finding a great counselor that can help you guys. Yeah, no, that's great. Guys, today we talked all about really the counseling aspects of dealing with a traumatic separation or divorce as it relates not only to kids, but to you as well. So if you've heard this and you're in that situation, we just want to encourage you. Just if we're the only people who are encouraging you to like reach out, find a counselor, Google whatever your city's name is and counselor and just try to give them a call. I remember uh, just one quick story here. I had a a client that called me uh, years ago and said, scheduled an appointment. And I said, great. And she said, this was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Mm. So I don't want to discount wherever you're at right now. Mm -hmm. If you're in that position, take an opportunity, reach out, find a counselor, schedule an appointment, walk in, and just start. Yes. So, guys, hope you've enjoyed this episode of Let's Therapy. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. We will see you again next week. Be blessed in all that you do. 